Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, continue talking about um, combinatorics. Um, we are uh, uh, solving some problems related to combinatorics, primarily the permutation problems. This is the second series of the permutation problems. Um, I suggest you to go to unizor.com to watch this lecture uh, because there are some notes um, which are accompanying the lecture. Uh, and in addition, if you are uh, a student who signed in to unizor.com, uh, you can take exams and uh, you can basically go through the whole process of uh, um, uh, having all these lectures in a row, basically getting a complete course of advanced mathematics for high school. All right, so back to permutation problems. Um, there are six problems. They are all relatively simple. And uh, let me just start it one by one. So the problem number one, we have certain number of letters. In this case, I have chosen a name of the game, tic-tac-toe, as a collection of letters from which we would like to make new words. Now, when I'm talking about words, I don't really mean English words. I mean just any sequence of characters which is using the characters, all the characters from, 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 from this word, or words, whatever. So in this case we have letters T-I-C, T-A-C, T-O-E, and all these letters must be used in different combinations uh, to form new uh, nine characters uh, words. I uh, don't uh, count dashes. So I'm just using the words, uh, the letters from this word. Question is how many different words, nine uh, characters, words I can construct from it. Well, um, what's the uh, a little twist in this uh, in this particular problem? Why is it not nine factorial? Because this nine factorial is basically the number of all the permutations of nine characters. Well, it's all the permutations of nine different characters. In this case, we have three times the same letter T repeated, two times the letter C repeated. So if I'm changing the places within the, among the T's, it doesn't really change the ultimate word. So if, you, if I will have the word T, 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 and then I, C, A, C, O, E, if I will take this word, for instance. Now, no matter how many times I'm changing the places between these T's, it will be exactly the same word, right? So, somehow I have to get it into account. Now, how? It's very simple, actually. Um, let's always consider a group of three T's and another group of two C's. Any um, permutation uh, which differs only by permutations within these groups is actually exactly the same, right? So, I have to um, group all my permutations um, using um, a certain number of, uh, uh, using the factors which uh, are, are characterizing the number of permutations within the group. So, if I have divided into, let's say, three groups, and these are all similar, and these are all similar, and these are all similar, then what can I do? Well, I can permute all these, I can permute all these, and I can permute all these, and it will be still be the same, exactly the same kind of, um, uh, uh, of, of the word. So, if I will divide my 9 factorial by the number of permutations of the group of 3 Gs, which is 3 factorial, and I also have to divide it by all the permutations of the group of uh, C, C factorial, uh, why? Because again, any permutation of uh, C's within the group gives me exactly the same um, word, same as T's. So that's why I have to divide by them. And that would be the final answer. Um, so this is basically a typical problem on permutations when certain um, objects within the set I'm permuting uh, are identical. So this is permutations with identical objects.
Problem number two. I have six different subjects mathematics, physics, uh, chemistry, English, history, and geography. Okay, I have to put all these six lessons in these six subjects in a schedule for a day, let's say for today. Now, obviously they're all different, so there are six factorial different ways I can put them into a sequence of lessons for a day, right? Now, there is, however, one particular requirement. History and geography are taught by the same teacher, and out of court as if he was asking actually to schedule these two subjects together so he doesn't really have a big gap between them so my question now is how many permutations of these six um, lessons exist such that history and geography stands always together well we can approach this problem differently for instance we can start positioning history and geography together. Where can we position them? Well, we can position them as number one and number two group, or number two and number three, or number three and four, or four and five, or five and six. So one, two, three, four, five. Five different positions of this pair. And also each pair can have it in both orders, history, geography, or geography, history. So I have 10 different positions. Now, the rest, whatever I have left, I have four different subjects left and four different places. Wherever these two are, then other four places are uh, available, right? So the other four subjects can be in any uh, permutation among these four positions. So basically I have to multiply it by four factorial to get um, to get the total number. So ten positions of my pair plus four uh, with each of them four factorial of different permutations of whatever is left. So that's how it's supposed to be, right? Now four factorial is uh, one to three, four to twenty-four, so it's two forty. So that's supposed to be an answer. Let me approach this pro pr problem slightly differently. The question is whether I will come up with the same result. Okay, here is how I, 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 I can make it differently. Let's consider, instead of six subjects, I have five objects. One, two, three, four, and five would be a combination of this. Now, five objects can be put into different sequence, one after another, in five factorial different ways, right? But, for each of them, and my history and, and geography will stand together, basically, right? But, what I would like to say that for each position of the history and geography as a total, a, 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 as an object, I can actually have them in different orders history object uh, history first and geography second or geography first and history second so i have to multiply it by two now five factorial is 24 uh, 120 so it's two times 120 so i have again 240 so slightly differently i have approached the, the same problem and get the same result which basically confirms that that i was right that's actually very good if you can approach the problem from two different angles and get the same result. So that's the end of problem. Okay. Next. Next the problem is just the calculation program. 10 factorial minus 9 factorial divided by 8 factorial. Now this is a simple thing, just as an exercise 
of what factorial actually is. Now, factorial is the product of all the numbers from the beginning of 1 up to the number which I have. So this is the product of all numbers from 1 to 10. Now, here is 8 factorial, so I can actually write it like 10 times 9 times 8 factorial, right? Because this is all the numbers from 1 to 8, and then 9, and then 10. That makes 10 factorial. Now, 9 factorial, I will use 9 times 8 factorial, and divide it by 8 factorial, which is 8 factorial times uh, 90 minus 9, 10 by 9, 90 minus 9, divided by 8 factorial, and this is 81. This is just a calculation, so you don't forget what factorial actually is. I told you these, these problems are very simple, right? So this is the proof that was simplicity. Um, okay, now I have the following problem. Well, <coughs> there is a king uh, who is in charge of three different kingdoms. We have Upland, Midland, and Downland. And he has three daughters, Mary, Anne, and Lisa. So, he is putting together his will, he is elderly, so in his will uh, he obviously decides to put three daughters in charge of three kingdoms. Uh, the only requirement is, for whatever reason, that Anne should not have upland. I don't know what what's the reason doesn't really matter. So we are interested in all the different permutations of three princesses among three kingdoms, but those where Anne is not in charge of upland. Well, let's think about how we can calculate it. Well, one way to calculate it is the following. Um, how many different permutations of three objects are? Well, six factorial. So, what I will do, I will put them in a row, Mary, Anne, Lisa, or Anne, Mary, Lisa, or Lisa, Mary, Anne, etc. The first one will get upland, the second one will get midland, and the third one will get downland. So, these are all different ways without this requirement about the end should not have the upland, right? So these are all combinations which are possible uh, of distribution of three kingdoms among three uh, princesses. Now, obvious condition is that no princess should be in charge of two kingdoms. It's one by one, basically, right? So, question number two. Which distributions we don't really want to have? We don't have these distributions when N is in charge of upland. <coughs> So these are bad distributions, which we should exclude. How many of them are? Well, if n is in charge of upland, then I have only two uh, princesses in charge of two lands, and I can put them in any order. Mary, Lisa, uh, in charge of Midland down uh, land, or Lisa Mary, in charge of Midland and Downland, right? So I have basically two different ways, two different distributions with n in charge of upland. So, this is a bad distribution which I have to subtract and there are two of them, right? Six, uh, oh, sorry, it's not three, six factorials, it's three factorials which is equal to six. I had in mind the calculation. So, uh, I have four different, four different ways. So, basically what I'm saying is that to get the number which we want, in this particular case, what we did, um, we took all the permutations and subtracted those permutations which we don't want. Because it might be a little bit difficult to think about how to do only the right way. Sometimes it's easier to do the wrong way and subtract it from the, all the different choices which we make. And this is this example of the, uh, that type of a problem. 
All right, so first all the permutations, which is 3 factorial, which is 6, and I subtract 2 when n is in charge of upland, which we should really avoid according to the will of the king. All right? Next. Okay, you have accumulated 12 science fiction books uh, of your three favorite writers. Three, Isaac Asimov. Four, Ray Bradbury. And five, Arthur Clarke. So you have 12 books, three of Asimov, four Bradbury, and five Clark. Five Clark. You have to put it on a shelf. But obviously, you would like to put them on a shelf in such a way that the books of the same author are together. Let's say you have three Asimovs, and then three, four Bradburys, and then five, five Clarks. Or four Bradburys, three Asimovs, and five Clarks. Or any other way. Question is, how many different ways of putting um, these books on a shelf when the groups are preserved by author, how many exist? Actually, this problem reminds one of the previous ones where I have this tic-tac-toe word. When we have something which we call, well, identical, it's not really identical, but anyway, it looks very cl close to this. Um, all right, so the total number of different distributions is um, 12 factorial. But this is not really uh, the, the distributions which we are interested in. This is not the way to approach this problem, because then we cannot really decipher which distribution, which, which position is, is good and which is bad. So this is not a good approach. What is the good approach? Well, let me start it differently. Let's consider this problem not as 12 books, but as three groups of books. Now, why am I grouping them? Well, because I know that they should be, uh, that the books of the same author should be together, right? So it should be either Asimov, Bradbury, Clark, or Bradbury, Clark, Asimov, or etc. So I have three different uh, groups which I can put in any order. So first, I will order by group. And I have, since I have three different authors, I have three factorial different ways to put these three authors in a row. So, if these are letters A, B, C, so it's uh, A, B, C, Asimov, Bradbury, Clark, or Asimov, Clark, Bradbury, or Bradbury, Asimov, Clark, or Bradbury, Clark, Asimov, or Clark, Asimov, Bradbury, or Clark, Bradbury, Asimov. So, these are all six combinations. There are no others, right? So, that's how first I position the authors. Fine, this is done. Now, with each of these distributions, let's say Asimov, Bradbury, Clark, I can put each group within each group in any order, right? So, which means I can actually, I can permute, I can change the places within the first group and within the second group and within the third group. And these are completely independent ones, which means I can actually multiply them. So, if I will multiply this, by all the different permutations within the group of the Asimov, which is 3 factorial, since there are 3 books, and within the group of Bradbury, which has 4 books, so it's 4 factorial, and within the group of Clark, which is 5 factorial. So that would give me a complete number of all the permutations which I'm actually interested in. So first I put my groups in position, there are 3 groups, and then I can put into certain position, books in every group. And since, I, th since they are independent, with each of, the, uh, uh, of these positions can be each of those positions, I'm multiplying them. So that's the answer. Now, 
Now, I didn't come up with a real number. I mean, uh, that, that's something which you can do yourself if you really want. All right, now, next and the last problem is uh, how many four-digit numbers are divisible divisible by five. So four positions, four digit numbers, and they are divisible by five. So let's just think about what our choices are. Well, we have four positions, right? For four digits. What can be the first digit? Well, it can be anything but, but, but zero, right? Because we are talking about four digits, so the first one cannot be uh, zero. So everything else, yes. So it's from one to nine. Now, what can be the second digit? Anything from zero to nine. Same thing, the third. Now, what can be the, third, uh, the fourth digit, the last one? The divisibility by five means it should end up with either zero or five. Right? Numbers which are divisible by 5 have the last digit 0 or 5. That's a necessary and sufficient condition for divisibility by 5. So these are our choices. They are independent, which means we have to really multiply the number of choices. So it's 9 times 10 times 10 and times 2. That's the answer, which is what? 1800. Well, that's it. Um, I do recommend you to go to unisor.com and uh, try to solve these problems yourself now after you have listened to this lecture. Well, actually, it would be even better if you did it before you listened to this lecture. But anyway, since we are already at the end. Um, and uh, don't forget that if you sign on uh, to uh, unisor.com as a student and you have a, a supervisor or a parent who is in charge of uh, your educational process, um, who can enroll you into the course and you can take exams just to verify how you are progressing on, on, on your way in advanced mathematics. Um, everything is free, so you're welcome. Um, thanks a lot. That's it for today and good luck.